But joining us now is Roger Altman, Evercore founder and senior chairman. Roger, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to you. Do you agree? Do you agree with Solomon? Are we seeing green shoots? Are the capital markets starting to show signs of life again? I think there are green shoots. I mean, we've seen, for example, a relative flood of convertibles issuance uh, over the last couple of weeks, which is a good sign. Uh, I don't see any reason why the ARM and Instacart IPOs won't go well. These are good companies. Uh, and the stage, I think, is well set for them to be successful. But we'll have to be sure that happens. Uh, I, I think any recovery in uh, financing levels is going to be gradual. I don't think it's going to be quick. But activity levels, generally speaking, uh, as I say, witness the convertible market are picking up. And uh, it's quite noticeable. Interesting. Um, so what's more important, especially to the IPO pi pipeline? Is it, is it these companies coming public and having success, successful debuts, or is it the stock and bond markets, for lack of a better word, behaving or, or at least performing well more broadly? I think it's weighted more to the latter. Uh, it's, it's hard to have a robust IPO market if overall capital market conditions are down and weak. Uh, so I think that's more important than any individual one or two offerings. But but both are relevant. Uh, and the current environment is decent because, after all, the S&P 500 is up, I think, 14 percent over the last 12 months. And everyone talks about high, how high interest rates are. But by my own standards over a long career, they're not really that high. So I think the, the environment is reasonably good. And we should see a gradually improving year in terms of uh, levels of financing, especially equities. Roger, I wonder how you're feeling about uh, investing in Asia right now with China's impact. Is it even possible to sort of decouple uh, China from Asia uh, if you're an investor? And if it is, how? Well, John, I think it depends on what type of investor you are. So, uh, if you're a private investor, or if you're, for example, a corporate investor who's focused on capital expenditures, it's quite easy to separate China from the rest of Asia. I was with some folks last night who were talking about a major commitment they've made, this is a pretty large company, to Vietnam, for example. And we're seeing a lot of focus on India uh, as an alternative to China. So I think it depends on what type of investor you are and as I say, if you're a private investor or a corporate investor, it's not hard at all. Look, China... But if you're not, how do you do it? Well, I think it depends on the size of your portfolio. It's pretty hard if you have a gigantic portfolio uh, because uh, so much of the overall stock market value in Asia still is centered around China. But I don't think it's impossible. Uh, and... Um, the narrative on China, as we all know, has completely changed. Six months, 12 months ago, you know, China's uh, unstoppable. And China's GDP is going to surpass America's, and it's going to be more geopolitically important year after year and all of that. Now it's reversed. Uh, demographic challenges, poor recovery at post-COVID, uh, inefficient state sector, mm. uh, excess public investment, you name it. Okay. And so... Uh, I think the, there's, a, there's a growing investor aversion to China, uh, and that's uh, unfortunate from China's point of view, and a lot of it's self-inflicted. Well, I also want to ask you about real estate, but not in China, uh, in the U.S., w with the expectation of higher rates for longer, what's the impact, not just on the housing market, but on the consumer, just that continued, I don't know, vice uh, of interest rate pressure bearing down? To me, the consumer, John, is showing a lot of resilience. Uh, I mean, the watchword for the entire economy right now, really, I think, is resilient. Almost everyone I know, as I said, six months ago, uh, thought it would be a lot weaker today than it actually is. Too soon to say what the third quarter growth figure will be, but looks like it could be 2% or better. And this late in the recovery, that's remarkable, and it was 2.4% for the second quarter. And yes, the signs of some slowing, the pandemic-related excess household savings are coming down, but they're still big. Uh, and labor markets are starting to cool, but they're still tight. 
So to me, uh, the consumer is is pretty resilient. Now, there are some signs, credit card levels, household debt levels, that the consumer is pulling back some. But to me, those are small signs so far.